Hello, Suzanne here with Motivated by Nature, and I am so excited to announce the sponsor for the winner of the July online Wild About Nature Challenge. Becky Cashman is the founder and product maker of Goodbye, which makes natural and non-GMO products for being outdoors for the skin. Her prize offer is two outdoor essential bundles for the July winter. Becky is originally from the United States and she ended up being an outdoor guide for over 15 years in countries like South America, Nepal, New Zealand, Switzerland, as well as her homeland of the United States. Becky ended up staying in New Zealand over 25 years ago. She resides there with her family and Becky is the founder and the product maker of Goodbye. Following is just a quick interview with Becky so you can get more behind the scenes look at her journey and how she created the product Goodbye. All right, so we are here today with Becky from an incredible New Zealand company called Goodbye. And she is actually helping to sponsor the July Online Wild About Nature Challenge. So we're gonna dive in a little bit. We're going to hear a little bit about Becky, her backstory and the products, the incredible products that she carries. But before we dive in, I just wanna acknowledge that I live, work and play in the Tree 7 territory of Southern Alberta. And I'd like to acknowledge all of those that care took the land before, those who are caretaking it now, and those who will caretake it for seven generations to come. And Becky, you're coming to us from New Zealand. So just share with us where that is. Morena, uh, I'm Becky. Uh, I come to you via America, Nepal, to Te Tai Tokoro, which is Northland, Aotearoa, which is New Zealand. And um, one of the foundations of our business is Kaitiaki, which is stewardship. And we acknowledge the stewardship of the past. Our job here now to live, work, and play in our Kaitiaki and the future. Love that. Love that. And you know what? I'm just going to dive right in on that. I'm curious as to what it is about nature like when did you feel this strong connection with nature and the importance of being a good steward to the land um well i think from a child to be honest um i was the oldest of four and the best thing i could do in my family was kind of stay out of the way so <laughs> i was either reading a book which i really loved or i was outside and my family allowed me to range far. I had a bike and I was climbing trees and crossing rivers and biking around. And always from that very beginning, I knew that where I felt the best, if I wasn't reading a book, <laughs> it was outside ro roaming around. So yeah, and then just took that opportunity to keep expanding that and expanding that and ended up making a living being an outdoor guide. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, that's awesome. I, I can relate to that early nature experience because I grew up on our family farm. And when you're just exposed to that and you're allowed that free range, you, you find out so much about yourself without even really realizing that, that you're learning a lot of things about yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. Have you yeah. ever seen that book, um, Last Child in the Woods by w Richard Love? That's one of my Bibles. <laughs> okay, <laughs> me too. Okay, so here's my starting point. I okay. didn't realize I had the childhood I had until I read his book. And then yeah. I went, oh my gosh, I'm a dying breed. Like my childhood is the childhood I think we should all have. And now we've got devices and now it's not about TV time. It's about device time, right? And so when I read that book in 2011, that became my, my, my guiding flag really to say, well, I want to participate in helping people stay connected. Yeah. I love that. I love that. He's written a lot of other great books too. So yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. He talks about vitamin N being yeah. nature, right? And yeah. 
the importance of building forts and just getting out there and play for play sake and um, so, so important. So, so important, especially. I think that's why I've been, I, I, th I told you earlier we, I'm starting to mountain bike and I think that's why I like mountain biking because we're in winter riding right now. Mm -hmm. And when you go through the mud puddles, it literally, you know, you're covered. You're covered <laughs> from behind, you're covered from the front. And it reminds me of kid mud messy play, right? It's like, it just happy face, you know, I don't mind being covered at the end. <laughs> well, they, they've actually done a lot of studies about you know how how the soil has biomes in it that actually trigger uh, chemicals in our brain to help flush us with the happy chemicals right so it, you know gardening getting out there mountain biking that's that's incredible so yeah, yeah. perfect good job, good job. <laughs> so so before you read this book you were also um, a guide for I believe it was 16 years or so? Yeah that's right so um, I started canoeing and kayaking when I was about 14 and that led to um, realizing that I really loved rivers mm -hmm. and when I was 18 I went and I got a job learning to take people on river trips and then that led to more climbing and then learning how to take people and teach them to rock climb and yeah so each step was like more the more skills I got the more opportunities I got to do things and over the course of a career I was able to work in Chile, Switzerland, Nepal, New Zealand and America of course because that's where I started from um, but the the travel to guide was very very intoxicating like you have a skill set that allows you to go and do stuff in amazing places. And I loved that way of traveling because you have a reason to be participating in the culture, but also making enough money to buy the ticket to fly to the next place. So, yeah. And that's how I, I met John in Nepal, my, my Kiwi husband, my Kiwi man. <laughs> so that was probably your favorite trip. <laughs> Um, yeah, that <laughs> rates right up there, trip. actually. And, and we're trying to get back to Nepal to go do a trip. Um, we've had it on, on our radar for a while. We'd love to take the kids there and uh, who are not, well, they're 13 and 17, but we'd love to introduce them to where we met and the rivers that we knew when we were working there. Yeah. That's, you are so because you basically got paid to play, right? In, in, in doing your... <laughs> It, it, it's true and and you do this guiding season and you're work you are working I mean it's oh absolutely crazy long physical demanding days but then in between you have these little seasons like a couple of times I took my climbing gear and after my work season in Nepal I went and climbed in Thailand for three months you know and <laughs> it's like not getting paid at all but having enough money to buy the you know the yummy very cheap delicious food on the beach so you know I, we we all did that we all did these great um kind of adventures in between the guiding so it was definitely a life <laughs> yeah and like you said getting getting immersed in the culture not the not the touristy culture but the mm. actual culture itself mm. so mm. that's brilliant so i'm curious like you went from being a guide to developing your own products so yeah. just give us a bit of a backstory as to kind of what inspired that yeah it's um it's interesting it's it's, it's very organic in terms of organic meaning it just sort of developed on its own of its own way but after many years of being a guide my body was and I'd hit my 30s I my body was a little bit tired and I um, was getting some help from a massage therapist who was kind of keeping me together. And I liked, I learned about the work and I decided that's what I wanted to do for my next version of me. So I went and retrained. And then when John and I went down to Queenstown, I had my new skill, which was I was a, mass, a certified massage therapist or um, in America, massage therapist. And um, I was starting my own practice, but to keep it together while I was doing that, I had to keep guiding because we had to have the money still coming in. So I was doing both. And that was where the products started to come is that I'd trained in the oils and 
and specifically using oils. I was making custom oils for my clients. And, and then I, because I was in the oils all the time and I was still up guiding on the river, uh, we had a sand fly issue that was um, significant. You know, if you live in a bug area, you know that when the sand flies or the mosquitoes are, they impact your quality of your experience, totally. especially for people who aren't used to it, right? Because the guides are just like, oh, whatever, you know, but, but <laughs> the clients would be kind of panicking and moving and swiping. And so we started playing around up there. We spent a whole season trying different oils that essentially were massage oils um, and seeing not only what worked because quite a lot of things will work, but also what they like to put on their skin because if you're gonna use it, you wanna actually appreciate the smell of it. And so that's, that became our first product. And that was 22 years ago now. Oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's incredible, 22 years ago. And so since then it's just grown and, and, it, and it got known and more people started to buy it. And, and literally it's, it, if, you know, people say, well, how did you become the success you are? They don't like my answer because they want to know how to do it in 24 months, you know, not, not 24 years. <laughs> yeah, they don't like that. They just grew and grew and grew and grew slowly, so slowly. Um, but now it's a really stable recognized brand here in New Zealand and it's everywhere you know it's in 700 stores which in New Zealand is everywhere because that's all we can hold <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting what, what you said about that you know people asking you how, how you did it because I heard someone being interviewed about how they how they enjoyed their overnight success and he said well it was 22 years of overnight yeah. work right <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, yeah, that overnight success is um, people just see the end point. They don't see everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think what I'm most proud about, about that time to be uh, just to, to put the, that um, wrapper on it is that we raised our, I had babies, you know, I was breastfeeding and carrying them in my backpack and still going hiking and still, getting them to the river and still doing messy play at the play center. And, you know, the business and the family were one working entity and the business had to take its place with the family. And so we never were the corporates that threw a bunch of money at it to make it blow up. We just took last season's profits and we grew it to the next one. So in some ways it was like, it was another part of our ecosystem, our child. And I, I'm really proud about that because most people don't build businesses that way. You know, mm -hmm. if you have that corporate knowledge that you know you have to dump a bunch of money in to make it really go, that just wasn't us at all. And, and now we've got something that's sort of like, it's almost like a teenager the way our kids are teenagers. You know? <laughs> Well, no, it sounds like a really uh, nice evolving process, a really organic, um, pun intended, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the kids were involved straight all the time. You know, if we we're making a new product, they're putting their, you know, their vote in, like <laughs> the smell, the color, the whatever, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And actually, while we're talking about products, can you share just um, some of the products that um, what we ended up doing. Yeah. yeah. So goodbye Sandfly was kind of the only thing we did for the first 10 years because I was literally in baby land. And so we just <laughs> had a, a bunch of stores that carried it. So goodbye Sandfly. Um, just, I just brought that to, so you could see it's um, just, it's a bug repellent that you put on your skin and it's just made of oils. And you said, you said that it works for mosquitoes and black flies. Mosquitoes, well, black flies, sand flies. Yeah. We, people buy it from all over the world now. We have an online shop and people buy it, but mostly, it, you know, we're a New Zealand business. Um, but what ended up happening after that is we went to this, we just realized that an entire family business based on one product is maybe not the best thing for a growing <laughs> family. So we, I went back to product making and developing more stuff. So we developed that one which is our Manuka bomb. So that's all the red ones. Awesome. We also offer that in tin, aluminum tins. So, okay, yeah. can you talk a little bit about Manuka? Because I know a lot of people here in Canada and stuff are, are not really familiar with Manuka. So. 
So Manuka is, um, it's unique to New Zealand and it's considered a regrowth tree. And what I mean about that is like, if an area has been cleared, it'll be the tree that comes first. Okay. Um, and for a long time, Manuka was considered an annoying tree. And I don't know how long ago it was, maybe 20 years ago, people started doing some research on the honey that came from it and the essential oils that came from it. And they realized that it actually, and this is so um, perfect to the, the respect of the, the Maori culture here is that each plant has a gift mm -hmm. and, um, and, and it's very well practiced and respected that the plants have a gift. So interestingly, Manuka, one of its gift is it um, is a really um, powerful inhibitor to gram positive bacteria. And gram positive bacteria is like what MRSA is, the, the staph resistant um, um, bacteria. So whereas most essential oils and lots of medicines deal with gram negative bacteria like tea tree would do that, this one has a unique gift. And so it's become quite famous for its honey and for its essential oils because it has a unique offering in the spectrum of our needs as humans, plants, animals. It can be used across, I mean, we use it as pruning paste. We use it on, you know, a nick in a, in a sheep because they, you know, we got a little bit of a, a sheer nick and then we use it on ourselves and our family. So Manuka balm is sort of that catch all for all the skin ailments that can that can make an unhappy skin, whether it's a rash or a cut or a little bit of a burn, so. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's wonderful working with something that belongs here, you know, I like and, that. And the process is quite intense to, to extract the, the oil, is it not? Well, I mean, all essential oil extraction is an intense, pro you know, you have to put a lot of plant material into the distilling system to come out with you know this much oil and some are more famously you know the ratio is is even bigger this is a tree made from the the edges of the tree stems which are the little tiny stems and I don't know exactly what the volume is to each but it's kind of in the mid-range of how much oil you get out for how much product but it's precious you know one drop is just it, one drop would be like lots of plant material that made that one powerful drop. Yeah. 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 And I, I love that, that, that it's acknowledged that every plant ha has a gift, right? And mm -hmm. we need to honor that. So that's, that's beautiful. And yeah. Well, what's happened here is it used to be people were ripping out the Manuka. Now they're planting it on purpose <laughs> because it's an industry. You know, it's because it's unique here. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. What what we uh, consider one time to be a weed or an invasive species, all of a sudden it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> we need more of that. <laughs> <laughs> we are interesting creatures. That's all I have to say. <laughs> mm. Oh dear. So you also have some um, sunscreen, I believe. Yeah. And something that's going to be hot off the okay all right, all right all right all right here we go <laughs> okay so um in 2011 john and i so that's 10 years ago now john and i decided we really wanted to make a sunscreen because we bought a sunscreen at the health food store that we thought was natural and we started using it but it wasn't working well for for us and when we looked at the back and really dug down into the ingredients it turns out that the front made with organic ingredients and all the signals on the front was natural but the back was actually they were using chemical absorbers and we had been tricked and that's our job is making natural products and so John and I said well for one we don't like being tricked any more than any other consumer likes being tricked because you think it's natural because it kind of signals it is so we started working on a sunscreen and it took us six years. Wow. We wanted to do something that no lab offered. We wanted to have a sunscreen that was without water so that it 
because all our products are without water because then you can pack them really efficiently. They take less packaging. And it just took, we just, we cried. We, it was so hard to create it, it from scratch. And then we had to take it through its testing, which we did. So complete testing. And now we have this sunscreen that because it has no water, I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's, it's quite like creamy. A, it's like a paste, yeah. It's yellow instead of white, right? Everybody think this is a zinc-based sunscreen, but it's got all the organic beeswax and the cocoa butter and that. So it bring and red raspberry seed oil. So it brings the color to that yellow. It's natural. So it's an SPF 50. Wow. And two hours water resistance. And literally they put people in the water for two hours and then they test it. So it's an extraordinary sunscreen. But what's what I love about it, aside from the fact that it feels amazing on the skin, is that it can be delivered like this. So it can be delivered in a tube, like we've got it like that. And that's the way we started out because we wanted to protect it from the air. But as we've learned this year, we're actually moving to starting to offer it in this kind of size, I love which is it. gonna be amazing story to tell. I'm really looking forward to getting people to think about that sunscreen process that you can refill into here and that you don't have any plastic tubes anymore, so. I love that sustainable packaging. Oh, excited. So that's, <laughs> we're calling that the sustainable sunscreen story. And that's really where my focus is right now is trying to help people understand there's a really good option out there. And oh. then this is the new one. Woohoo! Announcing and, first scene here. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's right. You guys have first look at it because um, I only just got this back from the lab about um, three days ago. Ooh. And it's not even done yet from the lab who produces it down in Auckland. Um, but we are releasing this on July 14th. I just picked the date. Um, so yeah, a little bit of time, but um, we're going to include this in with a outdoor essential skincare kit. So you guys are gonna get first, firsty first look at this brand new product and it's vanilla balm. And, and it starts with the bean. And it's we for the actually, lips. It's right. for lips and skin. So we set, we tell people balms are for skin as well. You know, like if you got a bit of a scratch or a rash, you know, balms are so healing. So it is quite thick the same way as the sunscreen is, but it's obviously not the sunscreen color. And, um, and it, because it starts with the vanilla bean, it just has that real richness of smell and texture. So I'll just show you what that looks like. Oh, that looks just amazing. Want to dip your finger in there, but exactly. I'm not allowed to. It's the one and only sample. <laughs> <laughs> so protect it, protect it. So yeah, yeah, so then, so the winner for the July challenge will get um, one of the lip balms. Yep, one of the vanilla. Yeah, yeah, and the the sunscreen. Yep, and then one of the um, goodbye sandfly, which is good for mosquitoes and black flies. Yep. Um, yep, and you you believe in people people sharing, so you're actually going to give the winner two of those little. Yeah, I love that. I love this. that because what we'll do is we'll put together two little kits. So one is for the winner, and then one is for the winner to choose what happens to that, whether it's within their family and it gets parceled out or, or it goes to their sister or a friend. Um, you know, we don't, we don't care. We just love that feeling of giving enough that you can on give as well. So two sets of, um, of basically a, 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 a size of every one of the things that we do. And, um, yeah. no, I'm, I'm so grateful for you. It's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. And yeah. I, I can't wait to try um, all, all the all the <laughs> wonderful. Pro no, like like the the sunscreen. I I burn like crazy, and yeah. um, so I would really be interested to see how this works. And the whole natural piece of it, like you have no GMO in your products. You have no no um, animal testing. No yeah. chemicals. Nothing. Yeah. So I just like I applaud you for that. I applaud you for your sustainable. Power. That, that's just that's the way we all need to go to make this world a better place for generations. yeah everybody yeah we each have a way of showing up with a gift and nobody can cover it all right mm -hmm. like 
you know, we're in, we started in this packaging, it's plastic, right? And, and it, at the time we're like, okay, it's plastic, but we're selling something that is a third the size of the multinational water-filled chemical, um, you know, DEET. Um, so we felt like we were doing a service. And now it's like, we've moved 22 years on. Everybody is paying attention, you know, everybody's thinking. So we, we're we moving and thinking and evolving as well. And I really love that, that there's nothing static about showing up to the best of your ability. What you're choosing to focus on next is also an evolution. I, Same I as the consumer is, the business is as well. And, and I'm excited about our next steps. Yeah. I love that. Because like, I, think, I think we always have to keep being like that three-year-old child that keeps on saying, well, why, why, <laughs> well, you know, why are you doing it that way? Why are, you know, and just really start to question what we've just accepted for, well, this is the way it is for, is maybe there are a better way to do this, right? Yeah. 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 And also to do it with enough enthusiasm and, um, uh, and willingness to keep showing up to that, because anything new does take time Absolutely. and you have to be willing to just hold that that um, stability to allow people to come to that message. You know, even we know the sunscreen in the aluminium will be three to five years telling this story <laughs> before somebody goes, oh, what a cool idea. <laughs> Well, hopefully I can help with that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shorten up that process. Uh. <laughs> and listen, you you also believe so much in the environment that you, you give some back. And I was just wondering if you'd like to share. Um, what, what yeah, sure. That that's Thank you for asking that, because that is a really big part of our advocacy or our, our kaitiaki is, um, is to make sure that everything we're doing is pointing to um, participating in the, the care of how we show up as a business, but also to use our business success to participate as well. So one of the commitments that we made um, in 2014 was we joined 1% for the planet, which is, a, do you know what that is? Do you know I, what that I, organization yeah. is? Yeah. There so, are it's more common now. It's like more well-known, not so well-known here in New Zealand, actually. I don't think anybody actually cares, but um, <laughs> we cared and we wanted to do it. And, and so we partnered up with a, a nonprofit here in New Zealand that works in the Pacific Islands called Oceans Watch. And Oceans Watch is doing sustainability work and, and sustainable communities in the Pacific Islands, in particular in the Solomon Islands. They also are helping us fund, because of COVID, they couldn't do their trips over to the Solomon Islands this year. So we funded um, an educational program based here in New Zealand. You'll like this actually, it, because we had to kind of find a way to repurpose um, we funded a um, education program that um, teaches leadership through the outdoor environment, through exposure to the outdoor environment. So, and it's young people in their, you know, early 20s. Um, and I, I love that feeling that we're, it's essentially what you're doing in, in another step, you know, of, of using the environment to help people develop skills so I, yeah I, I do love that because nature has so much to teach us if we're just willing to slow down look and listen and yeah. what comes out when people are exposed to just being in nature is is phenomenal it, it's it's life-changing it really really truly is and I love that you're promoting that through mm. that organization thank you I can't wait to hear what happens with your people in July. And also I'm going to do it. I've decided, so I can't do it in July, but I would, I'm going to do the course in August. I've changed my date. So, um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to participating as well and taking my practice through your teaching. That's wonderful. 
Well, and you can do your mountain bike rides while you're <laughs> <laughs> doing the challenge. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That way too. So that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. And listen, do you have any closing thoughts at all that you'd like to leave people with it all? Well, I believe in what you're doing completely. And, and I, I guess the people that are watching are the ones that are getting ready to do this, uh, this inquiry. And I would just say, I'm really glad for the curiosity and the willingness to, to see what it's about. And I really encourage that what can happen in 30 days is nothing short of transformation, mm -hmm. that the awareness that comes from what you're offering will be profound and to really say well done and, and, and enjoy the ride because it, it will be, you'll be somewhere really wonderful in 30 days. Mm -hmm. And along the way, you know, little treasures almost, if you will. So, yeah. Well, thank, thank you for saying that because that's one thing that we have found people that are avid outdoors people find that they just become that much more mindful when they're mm. prompted each day and they're supported on the platform but i'm really excited that the winner gets to experience your product and what it is that you have to offer and for people that may be in the challenge but may not be winners or people that are just watching this in general out of out of interest for them yeah. to reach through to you, what we'll do is we'll have your website link um, mm -hmm. at the end of this. So mm -hmm. we can reach out to you. And I believe when people order um, $90 worth of product that the shipping is free. Is that correct? In Canada, yes. In Canada? So we've just okay. got a, a new service for Canada. Um, and we can ship really reliably. We can get it there. Most everything's been arriving within five working days, which is just amazing. So that's yeah. better than our postal service here. Just want to let you know. I know. In Canada. <laughs> so many problems and so many delays and lost packages. And now we have a new service and um, they're doing a great job. And so, yeah, if you order $90 Canadian, um, it's free shipping to Canada. And then, but we can ship worldwide as well. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. And great products, at least, um, in, in our hemisphere for this type of year, when we're facing the- You guys are perfect. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're in your summertime, which is absolutely perfect. That's right, yeah. No, so looking forward to it. And I just want to thank you again for helping to sponsor for the winner of the July challenge. And I wish you the best of success with your business and continue to go the way you're going. I just, I love what you're doing. And like I said, I can't wait to try some of the products Wonderful. because they just sound so amazing. So thank you Thanks, so much Suzanne. for your time. Yes. It's a pleasure. All okay. right. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye. To reach out to Becky, please check out the link above and see the entire product line that she carries. It is an incredible natural product that is GMO free. To take part in the July Wild About Nature Challenge, sign up by June the 28th of 2021. Stay safe, be well, and get wild.